The corporations have not yet won. Community still exists in small tucked away areas not often talked about. Artists and businesses beginning to thrive in places thought to be defeated. Dave, I like to call him David Francis. And I, Tom Maslowski, are here to give you a glimpse of what's going down in downtown J-Town. We're going to be interviewing all of our favorite musicians, artists, and business owners that give every ounce of themselves into what they do. We are back at Third City Sound for episode 36 of What's Going Down in Downtown J-Town. How about that? 36, or did I screw up? Is it 35? Dave, which one is it? I don't keep count, unfortunately. It's 34. It's thir- no, we have 34 up there. Super fan Brian. It's middle-aged. <laughs> it's got to be 35, because Tim Plaker was 34. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look on my iPhone now and see. The middle-aged version of what's going down in downtown J-Town. This is, this is really... right about the time when the podcast gives up on its dreams and gets a real job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be awesome. Hey, it could be on my podcast, What's Going Down the Toilet in Downtown Joyland. <laughs> what's Going Down in Downtown J-Town is going live to get a haircut today, a suit, a haircut and a, and suit. a job. That's and, right. And nice new shoes, because you have to have some good shoes. It got kicked out of its parents' basement last week. <laughs> Three times, as a matter of fact, if I, if I do say so myself. I just want to be back for the midlife crisis episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's currently what I'm going through right We're going to broadcast from the auto show, yeah. <laughs> we have a really special episode tonight. I'm actually really excited about this one. Um, we decided to do a world premiere of two new albums coming out on February 16th at the Rialto Square Theater. Um, we have John Condren here. Hello. And Mr. Brian Motel. Hello. And uh, we have a new song off of each album that we're going to let you guys check out. Uh, we're going to listen right along with you. Um, the John Condren song is going to be Dead Tree, the title track off of the album. And Brian, we have your song called Names. And I'm sorry, what is the name of the album? Well, who Gets the Last Laugh on Doomsday? Excellent. So we're going to check this out for the first time ourselves here, and we're going to um, come back and get a little insight on what these guys did during the recording of this album.
a game Playing for the purse Maybe the peace is in the prices And the joy is in the work Pulling up a dead tree Filling in a hole Work it from the morning Way down into the night Buy yourself a new seat I'll be been what you sow Takes a little time A little time to get it right Takes a little time A little time to get it right Takes a little time A little time to get it right Takes a little time A little time to get it right
That was absolutely fantastic, yeah, both of you. Right? Wonderful, beautiful, Brian. Yeah. wonderful, Brian. Oh, you man, that was I think fantastic. the perfect opening track. Yeah. Fantastic, man! Wow. I mean, uh, that I is never the opening track, right? <clears throat> it is okay, yeah. perfect. And I never got to hear any of the recordings of the new stuff that you were doing, Brian. That yes. was that was a great song. Thank and uh, John, I'd like to uh, cheer kind of with you here on this. I, yeah, it's the first time hearing the actual album that I got to record with John Condren, the Old Gang Orchestra. That was that was awesome to hear. Duh, you sound great on it too, man. Like like it was, it was awesome. Uh, so 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 amazing to sit here tonight and hear uh, Brian's. Uh, record and, and and his gang you know like the like river horses record like the fruition of it to hear it kind of like the vision that we've spoken about uh over the over the last couple of months or, or whatever and, and to be able to hear that like well done man like really really well done thank you and everything i've heard so far and i've heard quite a few of yours and <clears throat> it all sounds just great and like i said man that's that's a great opening track too that's a great song in general ah, but cheers to you, <clears throat> start it off that way and Perfect. Brian, what what made you choose this particular song to show us today? Well, I guess because um that's my favorite one on the album, uh lyrically. I think it that single song kind of sums up the entire album. So I, I because I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what every word was and what they mean. Yeah. And did I hear Dave mention that this was more of a concept album this time around? Some of it is. Uh, I think there's only uh, five of the songs are part of a little storyline, and it, at the beginning, it was it was gonna be more, um, you know, with the whole album, there was gonna be more about it and everything, and I was gonna do all these different things um, with it, with the storyline. But I think in the end, we kind of just like put it there, <clears throat> and I think that people will pick up on it or. If not, I think it still offers something as far as the lyrics go and everything. Separate that, pieces of art. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you need to know exactly how the story is going to understand what it means. Sure. <clears throat> so you don't have to see sense. the first season to get the second season, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and John, um, we have obviously <clears throat> talked at great length about sure. the meaning of the album, yeah. but um, Dead Tree and uh, mm -hmm. the the artwork and mm -hmm. a lot of the symbolism you used has some pretty in-depth purpose and meaning. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, yeah, for sure. I, I And and it's it's funny because Brian and I have been kind of joined at the hip through this process. And, and as different as these projects are and as different as these um, presentations are, I think that a lot of the uh, uh, the genesis of them is similar. And I, I, yes. I think that um, may, maybe that's why we find this common ground Maybe that's why this this show will work at the Rialto, uh, or or maybe it's why it won't. <laughs> you know, it remains to be seen. But we go down together. I, but I, I think that 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 we've we've had so much so much time together uh, to to talk about it. We we've kind of shared a similar experience these these last at least two months or three months. Yeah. Um, of of of, of uh, you know where we're at with, with with the recordings and being able to hang out and and talk and. It's it's very interesting to me too because I th I think that like you know Brian from the get go when we were talking early on I think had this grandiose idea about a concept album and 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 like putting together this concept record and I thought that was so great and I thought you know I've never done that I don't know if I ever would you know I don't know if I'm bold enough to do something like that you know and Brian you know kind of did it and then you know in our in our conversations like oh it fell short and so 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 there's there's this and this that you know when i get that for our record it was the exact opposite I, I like there was never any intention to have any of them have anything to do with one another and at the end of the day i feel like we have this cohesive themed nice. kind of record not not what anybody would call a concept record but there's this cohesive theme through it um you know and i think that's why we why we decided to play dead tree tonight was because um, you know it's indicative of maybe the mood or at least the the uh, intention of the record. So, well, so what uh, was the theme? Would you say? I don't know. You know, because you had a lot of heavy symbolism with. Yeah. Was it ancient? Yeah. Ancient, like uh, uh, an ancient language. Yeah. Actually, kind of. Um, was it? Was it yeah, based all, in, uh, in Gaelic? Uh, uh, Orum, it was not. No, it's a, it's an Orm alphabet. It's it's a, the symbolism on the front of the record is a, there's a. 
for those of you that catch it, Tom's just giving it all away. I was hoping these things would be conversation <laughs> pieces throughout the year, but uh, there, there's some there's some strokes and some strikes and some 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 imagery um, uh, that is uh, relative to the Orem alphabet, which is an old um, like an ancient kind of uh, pre Druidic, to my understanding, you know. Around about the same time, but slightly before, you know, kind of uh, alphabet glyphs, almost uh, in a way. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And 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 you know, I'm not going to give away what it says, sure, because <clears throat> we'll talk about that later, maybe. But but I think um, I think it was just about like getting back to the roots of what, whatever it is that that the roots were. So not necessarily a specific root or a specific set of roots, but maybe our roots. Uh, collectively, individually, like the the idea of getting back to the roots of it, getting getting back to the the organic nature of it, getting back to the the wood of it, you know, so to speak. Yeah. And I think that um, you know uh, Bill Aldridge and and uh, you know everybody involved, you know Dave Francis, who, who's your your partner in crime here, uh, were very in tune with what we were trying to do when we were making the record, and that was to to make a record that sounds like we're standing in a room and and just yes. everything's vibrating and. Uh, they were very successful in their in their you know their interpretation of it. I I think you know for me personally, I guess remains to be seen. All this remains to be seen. This is a magic kind of electric time for us because you know when you finish a record and you get it back and you're about to put it out, nobody has critiqued it yet. Nobody yeah. has told you that you're you're absolute crap yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like you're you're allowed this this brief period of time, this two weeks or this three weeks or whatever, to just have it. Where you think like you know the world is 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 possible. Sure. Everything is possible, and it's it's a really great time. And to do this show tonight with Brian here and with Ellis standing over there with the camera, Mr. Ellis, and, right? And with yourself there, and and, and with Dave Bill and working Bill, the board Dave tonight. And Bill back there, yeah, I know. Bill's full on engineering um, this whole show. <clears throat> there's there's this. We're actually recording. This never happens. We're recording something in 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 this in between twilight kind of magic time where sure. you have not yet given it to anybody yet it's all yours you're happy with it and and no no one's been able to like kind of you know uh do anything to it to to dent it in any way shape or form yet you know what i mean you've, yeah you, you're not failed in anything yet no and as we were trying to pick things yet, out so too uh, it's it's brilliant it's a brilliant time period i i think it's a ma- anybody that's ever written a song or 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 produced a piece of art or 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 or, or i don't know maybe just like you know, push the button on the coffee maker. Like, you know, the anticipation is going to be a great pot of coffee <laughs> and you haven't drank it yet. You know, they're, 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 sure. it's that in between time, you know, it's brilliant because, um, like y- y- you feel like all things are possible. We come back in two months, we might have a totally pessimistic, terrible view of, of everything. That, I hope not. I don't think we will. I don't you know? think so either. But right now th- this is, there's magic in this time. Don't you think Brian? I think so. I think, I think, um, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Well, and I think it's exciting too because, you know, and as we were trying to pick a song out for tonight, I didn't realize how many songs we had not played on stage before. Yeah. And Brian, most of these songs you have not played out, right? You've kind of kept it at a minimum playing any of the new songs off the new album out live yet? No, we've played all of them live. Oh, all of them? Okay, yeah. okay. Well, well done, Tom. Well, well, well done. Well, well done, Tom. <laughs> I haven't heard the album yet. Where's so, your uh, research? What's your album called? And uh, do you play the songs? There was no research, <laughs> as the album has not yet been released. So yeah, not too many uh, people have heard it. So that was the first time <clears throat> but, hearing but, the album. But I'll tell you what. Uh, for me personally, I've I've never heard it like that. I I've heard my own version of it when you've played it, either by yourself or or with, with River Horse with the band, who's phenomenal by the way. The whole band is phenomenal, but. I think this is the first time anybody's ever going to get a chance to hear what was in your head when it all came down, and I think that's that's brilliant. And Brian, where did you didn't you do most of the recording on your own? Did all of it except for Mr. Dave Francis did the drums. Yeah, right here, and they Dave. came out beautifully. I've heard lots. Of, every everybody I've showed has has talked about the drums. Well done, Dave. <laughs> so and there's obvious DVX pluses. compressor that I got, and I, I debuted it on your track and it, apparently it worked out pretty well Kathy they've, calls they've him also David mastered Francis. it yeah David I did I also mastered the album I, I assisted on John's I played trumpet on both albums I'm kind of the glue that's holding this whole thing together <laughs> oh here we go all right, here well, we go all right what else you got and so about? humble so humble <laughs> so humble 
I say one um, sentence a show. I didn't make it a good one this time. <laughs> it's great. Now, Brian, That's what great. were some of the pluses and minuses of having 24-hour access? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what were some of the pluses and both, minuses? Both the pluses and the minuses. And the minuses. With Dave. <laughs> yes. In, in and of itself, yes. No, no. Is, that, is that a serious question? Oh, oh yeah. We, okay, yeah. what are the pluses and minuses of working with Dave? Yeah. David J. Francis. Well, uh, we get along with Dave just great. Um, <laughs> that there's so much hesitation. That's, that's the truth. Uh, we had a great weekend. We did these in two days, uh, all the drum tracks, and uh, <clears throat> we really. I, I had a, I had a great time. I don't know about Dave, but uh, <laughs> I had a wonderful I don't know, Scott time. Scott Nelson did as well. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, definitely a, a memorable moment. Now the in minuses. My life. And, I like to think I'm fun to work with. I got a nickname out of the deal. It was a good time, man. But what's the nickname? Um, Angry Dave? Oh, well, there's Danger Dave, there's Pop, Papa Dave. <laughs> Danger Angry Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave's got a couple. We never called... See, that's the thing, like, you know... We had no nickname. That's the thing about being old. Like, you know what we call him? Dave. Dave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't used to be. You had a, You called me something else when we were younger. Well, I've called you a number of things over the course of the project. But I meant to my face <laughs> on record. It's always just Dave. You know? I like Danger Dave yeah. now and forever. Um, but no, seriously, what were some of the pluses and minuses of being able to work on your own album whenever you wanted to, night or day? Um, because exactly I know that. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I mean, I know I would have <clears throat> had a really hard time. Uh, stopping myself from changing things over and over. Oh, again. you have no idea. I would I would work on this every day after work, <clears throat> and then I would spend the whole day at work listening to it right through headphones <clears throat> and going home. And well, I would actually send these songs. Everything I I did, like the smallest mixes or changing anything, to Scott, <clears throat> and and uh, he would listen to it on his lunch break. We would talk about it, and I'd go home and change it or all kinds of things. Um. It's dangerous to have that. Now, how often did you retrack <laughs> things? Did you ever go so far um, as just to keep retracking? Yes. Like, yeah. there's, there's, if I may, there's one song I think I did three masters for because he kept retracking stuff three. and sending it back over. Okay, Brian, is this true? One small thing in it, and that one. That just was, an example. Just an example. Yeah. I uh, no, but um, retracting <laughs> things. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we we retract or I retract a lot. Now, just doing different stuff, like using different guitars, or did you rewrite whole new parts? No, um, just, oh, I had struggled with the vocals a little bit. I think we stopped um, perfor- uh, practicing um, during the whole recording process, kind of took a break. I mean, I was still recording at home and everything, <clears throat> which uh, was a bad idea, actually, when it came to the vocals, and I struggled with it until we got back to it, and then after that, you know. What about it was not a good idea? I think that I just... Spent so much time doing other things and I focused on the vocals once we got back into practicing and it was a lot easier. And then I retract the vocals a lot, you know. And after after we got back to it, it wasn't it wasn't long. I did them quickly and uh but see that's why it's nice to do it at home because I kinda like last minute a lot of them a lot of those vocal tracks on the album were done when the album was done, you know. Like I yeah. thought it was finished and I didn't like certain things and I was able to do that real quick and Turned out better than it than it was. Get that final stamp on it. Yeah. And now, John, I know firsthand, and actually, I don't know firsthand because you and Mr. Bill Aldrich were here much more than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, Billy, Billy, and I are common law married at I'm, this point. I mean, good God, seriously, there was. I mean, it was almost every single day for a month, man. For sure. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many hours? And if yeah. Bill can shout out to you in the background there, how many hours were logged in on this album? I think it was between eighty and hundred. Wow. Mm. I mean, that was, that's, and you know, we, we did this pretty quick. We weren't really well, intending. So we, we had intended to release the, we were going to go into the studio. That was the plan, you know, and release the record in May, I believe was the original <laughs> idea. Yeah. And then this whole um, dual CD release thing with Brian and with River Horse. Uh, was presented to us. It wasn't anything that we uh, kind of planned or, or, or chased or, 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 or tried to do on our own. It was it was kind of dropped in our lap, and it was a great opportunity. It was a, it was it was wonderful that 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 they thought of us. And Mike Trisna at Chicago Street Pub, Absolutely. we mentioned you know like like 
kind of thought of us and masterminded it, and then with along with the Rialto Theater, and they said, uh, you know, can you? And this was kind of separate from Brian and his gang, you know, like like, can you have the record out in February? And I I I said no, I, like no. Yeah, right. And then Trish said, well, what if what if it was because we were going to do a dual release with River Horse at the Rialto Square Theater, which is this legendary place here. On a Friday. And, and on a Friday night, yeah. And I and I and I said yes. And then I left I left this, you know, meeting or for lack of a better term. Sure. And and I, I remember driving home going, There's no way. There's absolutely no way. <laughs> you know, and so we, we, we basically did, you know, the four months that we had planned to to make the record or three and a half months or whatever, we consolidated it and we we did it uh, in a month's time, basically. Yeah. For for for, for better or worse, you know, uh, about a month. And um, none of that would be possible without you know, like Billy Aldridge saying, you know, I'll I'll, I'll you know, match that. You know, <laughs> I'll 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 come hang out with you, and I'll I'll come do these things. You know, and, and Dave Francis as well. Like, but you know, Billy Billy basically saying. Uh, I'll spend the next month with you every spare second, every every Literally. minute that we're not doing things that we need to do. We'll we'll spend this time together and we'll make this record. And and it was uh it was it was actually fantastic. You know, I can only speak for myself. I, I, I told somebody earlier tonight that I think that when I walk into a room now, Billy throws up in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like just just because just or because just on the, the, floor. the trauma of spending that much time with me over the course of a of a month. I was gonna say, that's, but, uh, a, that's a level of commitment that I was not willing to bring. Yeah, no, no, no <laughs> doubt. Well, was heavy duty. Yeah, we saw Dave. We saw Dave. He got coffee twice. It was brilliant. <laughs> no, but but uh, <laughs> out of all hundred hours, <laughs> nah. But 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 really, it was it was kind of. Uh, um, Aside from the band, you know, aside from you guys and um, Ellis and Tom and Don making this commitment, um, on top of that and and underneath that and and, and around that was 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 uh, Billy and I kind of being able to get together in, in every and, session, regardless if I yeah. was here or if Ellis yeah, was yeah. doing his and tracks just, just, or whatever, just, just button heads and and grinding it down and and figuring out what it is that we wanted to do and then making it work and. And doing it, you know, consolidated, but without any kind of sacrifice, without, without sacrificing any of the things we would have done had we had all the time we intended. And That's the key, because you don't want to make a record, I don't think, at this point in time, because it doesn't matter that much anymore, really, to be honest with you. That's a conversation for another thing altogether, right, but it right. doesn't really matter like it used Singles, to, really. Right. You know, so if you're going to make a record or you're going to record these things, then then they have to be the things that you're proud of and the things that you want to do. And and the things that you want to say and the way that you want to sound have to come through, and so if you're going to do them in a shortened period or consolidated period of time like that, they need to have the same voice that they were going to have if they were five months or a year or or, or, or whatever. You know, they can't sound like they were rushed. They can't sound like they were done. You know, you can't feel like right. oh, this is a this is a great record for something that was done in a month. Yeah, it yeah, can't feel yeah, that way. There's no yeah. point in that. You know, the, 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 there's no point in it. And it almost reminds me of, uh, for back, lack of better terms, almost like a like a sweat lodge thing where you just go and you you, you kind of you push yourself to the limit. And I, I know I have some moments where I felt like we were in the thick of it and we made it to the end. Sure. Was was there any time where like without saying it to anybody else, did did you feel a a sense of like despair? Did you feel like panicked at ever? Uh, you know what I I have to say, um, the only sense of despair or panic that I had. About this whole process or this whole rec- the, this 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 whole project was prior to actually starting it. I think I we had made this commitment. We had decided that we were going to do it, and I felt instantly like there's no way this is going to happen uh, because of the way we had decided to do it. We had decided to do it democratically, which is which was a, a a thing that I had not done in a long time. Sure, usually you know, we the- had decided to share a lot of the responsibility and and to yeah. take each other's opinions. And Which you did, you you did to the fullest. I, I have to say, fair enough. And I think, but but I think that like, you know, it was it was a large undertaking, and yeah. I think that the only time that I ever felt like it might have been a mistake was before we started it. Because as soon as we started it, arguments and all, and the, the things that went into making it, I never once felt like like it wasn't going to be what we wanted it to be because because of of everybody that was involved. You know, so it was brilliant. 
And, you know, Brian, I was always curious, too, because you guys didn't have, well, I know, I'm sorry, well, Dave did the, the drums, but, you know, by and large, you didn't have an outside party to help you with this whole thing. So it was just the three of you as River Horse playing the songs, writing the songs, recording everything, deciding, you know, what kind of mix is going to have. Is it going to have this layer or that layer? Where to tuck the background guitar. How did you have any moments where you felt like you were just going to kind of lose it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we talked, we talked that night. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of times where I felt discouraged. Um, I mean, how do you keep yourself in check? Not having a third party to help you out. You I think some one. of my I think some of my mixes might have had him a little discouraged. I tried <laughs> working on a couple. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't but quite before the that, right direction. You know, He's like, yeah. <laughs> um Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. another podcast times, altogether, Dave. <laughs> where I did feel discouraged, but I just had to, you know, sit back and listen to some other things and try and hear it in a different way. Um, really zero in on everything that like bands I really, really admire. Now what do you mean and listen like, to it in a different way? What do you mean? As upside if, down as if sometimes it was, if is it like i don't know as if it was something you did or i don't know because sure, sure it's hard to listen kind of remove yourself to your from own, it a right bit, right yeah. Yeah. to your own recordings uh it's hard to do that through the throughout the process and and um i always feel good about it but uh it has like ups and downs there were some nights where i felt <clears throat> like it was just amazing and then some nights where i just wasn't feeling it and um but you gotta you gotta keep going, and the end product is always. So, was there anybody else that you would let listen to it throughout the process to kind of just to bounce ideas off of? I let Scott listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was strictly just the three of you, and well, and and Dave. And Dave, I did have some info. He would show know, me some yeah. rough mixes. And I did see John singing along to the lyrics in that one. How long? How I think long? I got a little. I think I got a couple previews of of some things. He, on, but yeah. that's the nature of our Brian and I. That's we went. Brian we, and I spend we, a lot of time talking about music. Yeah, and I think, we share a lot I think of things. We met so, up. I mean, we saw each other at least once a week, and for sure, catch yeah. up on where we were. I mean. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, so John, a couple songs. I heard some of you guys's early, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was it was fun to do that. It really was. But it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like you know it, it wasn't. Uh, I think it was it was pure like uh, 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 just getting it out of your own head because it was never like a, like hey, what do you think about this or an opinion thing or an exchange thing. We didn't share. Both of the records, actually, because because I did that with Brian as well. Too, Brian probably heard a couple things before you did. To be honest with you, Tom, like, sure, which is strange, but we just kind of along this this particular timeline or whatever, because we were going through the same thing. We 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 kind of uh, happened upon each other and we're like, hey, you want to get in the car and listen to a tune? Or I'm I'm struggling with this one, or I think this is pretty good, you know, kind of a thing. So I think, but for, for he 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 had his. Uh, world pretty dialed in and the people that were were valuable as far as uh, uh, giving opinions about it or deciding what it would be uh, they were already in place similar to the way we were you know it was but I think that it was very nice I mean for me and I can't speak for Brian but for me it was very nice um, to have uh, you know somebody like Brian that I could run into and I could just bang these tunes off him and not sit there and ask for him to tell me what he thought should be done with them or not, yes, exactly. not, 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 not to kind of dwell on what, what did Brian think about these songs? It was just purely like, I need somebody that's out of this particular bubble to hear these songs so that I can let them go and then come back and, and gather my own thoughts about them, you know? And I think, you know, uh, I think that that's something that, that, that kind of happened interchangeably for us. So, yes. Know. And now I guess, Absolutely. like... <laughs> oh, and those are the chimes signaling the end of the interview portion I think that of our this, interview. this particular interview should go longer. I yeah, think it should just go longer. I, I think <laughs> we didn't even go, talk about the I think songs we I think it's a special episode, and this one should go longer. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, well, know. then, 
Okay, I do have I do have another question I'd like to pose. The one about food was like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're and at the 40 beer. minutes here. And guys. the beer. And the beer. Oh, we're at 40 minutes. Well, I you know, I honestly I, I do have a couple the of questions. The FCC will be questions. very upset with this. <laughs> I did want to know um are there any uh like surprises you guys have ready for the show? Is there anything that we can look forward to as far as what we're going to see on stage? Brian? <laughs> no plans. We got just got to we got to wait it out, huh? <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> Tell me about your surprises. <laughs> well, it might be a that kind of ruins the thing, doesn't it? You well, know? you know, I just meant like, is there a hint you could drop us? You're going to have any kind of like stage show, or you're going to have, you know, do you have any like something planned for us? I know John's got a few surprises in store. Um, but Scott might take his shirt off. We don't know. Yeah. You never know. You cannot do that you anymore. Got, oh, all right. That's well, not... Scott won't be taking his shirt off. <laughs> we don't really. Have, and you know, Wink. Not, we don't have really have any surprises. I think that I think that all we're talking about doing is 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 bringing some friends out. Sure. Um, some some people that played on the record, uh, to do like exactly what they did on the record, just to celebrate that 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 particular uh, you know, moment or whatever. You know, like to have those guys and. Also, Scott will be taking his shirt off at our set as well. <laughs> He'll no be leading kind of, the mosh pit. Yeah. I mean, there's no, like, you know, you can't have River Horse shirtless Scott and not Old Gang Orchestra shirtless Scott. We have, not, we have to have them both together. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cohesive set. It would be surprising right. if <laughs> he didn't do both. <laughs> so stupid. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Scott's not even here to defend himself. He well, or to confirm. But now it's one. Or to confirm it. To go. Like, you know, he's actually going to do it. Yeah. yeah, these guys have been up here. We've been up here all night long. We uh, we just had rehearsal for like, well, three hours or something like that. And we decided, let's keep talking. Yeah, it's good thing. It, it's a good thing it's not Tuesday, you know? <laughs> right. What do you mean by that? Now it's Wednesday. Now it's <laughs> Wednesday. Whatever it is, it is. Well, I... I really appreciate you guys coming up here and Thanks, hanging out and chatting with us and uh, staying up way past your bedtimes, being that I think <laughs> you both have to be awake now in like two hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Bill, too. We'll probably, the- just get, we'll probably just go to Denny's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I don't know if you know this or not, but I like to eat food. Um, oh. I, I could probably go for some food right now. <laughs> Wish there was a taco joint. The moon's right over now. Miami, <laughs> Bill says. <laughs> I didn't bring my styrofoam, yeah. my traditional styrofoam yeah. food trough today. I think uh, I think that uh, to, just just to get out of the way, I think that River Horse and uh, you know Brian here, River Horse, the, the the entire thing, and what they've just done with this with this new record is something that absolutely needs to be paid attention to. It needs to be seen. It needs to be heard. Um, they matter very, very much. I've said that a couple times, you know, uh, to different people, but to me, they matter very much. And I think that, that it's important, um, to have bands that matter, especially nowadays, because, uh, it's so easy to have, uh, background music filling your sure. life and, and music that you hear that's fine filling your life. And you, you go about your daily business and you do it. River Horse is a band uh, that that you should listen to, and then like do things around, and and uh, uh, pay really, attention and, to and, as opposed I'm, to. I'm just... so excited to do this show with them and to release this album with them, and uh, I just wanted to say that before before we got off the uh, before we got off the podcast here, the cast. You know, I just I just oh, wanted to you. make sure I said that. That is very nice. And now I will say something <clears throat> because. I met you when I turned 21, and uh, I didn't play music out or anything before, and um, Mm -hmm. it's just brilliant, man. I think that without meeting you, I I don't know what I would be doing. There would probably not be a band, River Horse, or anything like that, and I got to meet (laughs) the rest of you guys and be part of the community, and now that we're doing this, you know, um, it's huge. It's, It's definitely the biggest moment in my life, and... So thank you and thank everybody, you know, I know. that's uh, always supported. I'm and just honored really to be a part of it. Oh, it's going to be great. You got the, yeah. the whole the whole nine. I mean, we, we always talk. Ta- the whole point of this podcast, you know, is is that you, Tom and Dave, you guys celebrate this insane community that, that that's kind of, uh, you know, happened 
and and uh, it's brilliant for all of us to be a part of it. You know, I think this is this is really cool because we're kind of in tandem on this. Like it's it's very yeah. strange and unique, uh, but um, all of it is 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 to be celebrated. And you know, pr- probably everywhere there is this. You know, maybe people don't recognize it or don't or don't get down with it or, or, sure. or they don't pay attention to it or whatever. But it's pretty much everywhere. Everything that's happening around you is is just as cool as it is anywhere else. So, yeah. you know, the whole point of I think the whole point of what's going down, you know, this whole podcast is to is to is to figure out what it is that that that's happening around you and support it and make sure that it continues to happen. And so, thank you for doing that. Thank thank you all, you know, you and Dave for for doing that and for Billy for having the studio and. You know the Trisnas for having the pub downstairs that support that, and everybody else that does it. Um, I I think for the both of us, I could say like we're, we're just really kind of uh, thrilled to be a part of it, and we're just exactly where we're supposed to be. You know. Yeah, and I think it's a it's a good representation of um, you know I, I was I was really bummed out after Hopstring Fest kind of came to an end. You know. Yeah. And. Um, I did feel a, a little sense of desperation. I've been part of a lot of music scenes before, and they all kind of fade out. I don't have any recordings of anything. Nothing gold any can document. stay, Pony Boy. Well, right, but <laughs> and because of that, I wanted to make sure that we that we documented all this stuff before it was gone, before like you know everyone moved on or whatever. But I think this is almost like um, maybe just a, a new, I don't know, it's a new era starting, you know. Uh, the local music Mondays is a great thing. You know, I, I I hear a lot of things from a lot of different fans about this or that or the other thing, but the fact that we're even allowed to go in there with no – nobody knows who we, who we are. They're, they're giving us a chance. We've obviously made enough noise and we have value enough to start, you know, getting a little bit higher up, you know, just kind of getting in front of more people. And I know that – you guys are capable of making people happy and inspiring people. You know, John, I, I don't talk about it very much, um, ironically, but a lot of the <laughs> lyrics that you have written have really uh, put me at ease. You know, they, they, they help me reflect on the things that I am going through. They, they, they have genuine meaning. It's not just like a bunch of, ooh, yes, and I'm going to say some words that rhyme. Or it has, it's, it's not what's going on at all. It's not a a party band or this, which is, I guess, not a bad thing either, but there, there's a, there's a sincerity and a passion with all the music that we hear here. I mean, even Brian's stuff, you, I can sit and listen to, I didn't realize how, how easy it was to play your songs when I was nervous, like, oh, come out and play with us. I'm like, I don't know any of these songs because what you're doing transcends what, what, what your hands are, are doing. The, the whole reason that humans love music has nothing to do with all the sounds that you're making. It's just that vehicle to have someone else experiencing, I don't know if you want to call it your thoughts or your emotions or whatever, but it's a, it's a human connection. It's kind of necessary, I think, to any culture, you know? And I'm really excited to be a part of it, and I really cannot wait to uh, be with you guys as we're pouring our hearts out on stage and um, and not not to be famous or not to be rich, but to just continue community, just to bring people together and let them know that there's somewhere they can go and be a weirdo or be totally normal, and it's going to be fine. We can all still hang out and have a beer and an arepa or a pizza or something, <laughs> you know? And I just well to, to, to keep that going and hopefully inspire yeah. the next group of people to come up and do that. I, I think... You know, I, I wish that all my students could come see the two of you play because you guys are masters of your craft. Oh, thanks, even Tom. if even if you don't get into the music, it's really well written, high quality stuff. I mean, you guys really have put the time and effort into learning your instruments and how to sing and how to write, and then performing it. Now we've recorded this great thing. I know you guys have made tons of albums before this, but I also feel like this is a big deal for whatever reason. It just it has weight. I haven't been this excited in a, in, a, in a very long time. So thanks for sticking through the long, crazy hours today and yeah. 
and all the all the goofy stuff. Thanks that goes for having doing us. This. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thanks for doing this. That was a blast. Thanks to you and and to Dave and and to, and Bill, to Bill, for, Bill for sticking yes, around tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say that maybe part of this excitement is you got a couple of engineers that are kind of coming into their own too. Bill's been doing a lot more stuff and yeah, definitely things are improving around here. The gear's always getting better. We're just trying to. Third City Increase Sound. Quality, th- Third City Sound is is uh, not to do a little commercial, but I mean, for me, I mean, you, you know, the history of it and and the uh, the fact that it exists right now is amazing, and we won't get into that right now because we did that already on an earlier podcast. But uh, to be in this room right now in you know 2018, and and to hear what you guys are capable of doing and and what Bill's done with Third City Sound right now. Uh, is amazing. It's not. It's not just you know. I mean, that that's the whole idea, right? It's not just songwriters or or, or some guy with a guitar. It's it's the whole nine. Like it's everybody yeah. that's involved in it, kind of chipping in and doing what it is that they do. Just like any any successful organization, like it takes all parts and takes everybody. And you know, Third City Sound to me is is world class. It it's it's there. It's like bar none. It's world class. Everything that you could possibly want to do can be done here. You know, it's up to you. So yeah, I mean, and they're obviously willing to put the time in to do it. For sure, it's very great. As long as the yeah. price is right. It's, well, I mean, it's about, it's, it's about it's about what what is it? Quarter to six in the morning now, and I think it's seven a.m. So obviously, the time is not a problem. <laughs> Twenty five thirty. We have right? currently been here for twelve hours, and we're never going home. And Ellis. Ellis I can't believe here. Ellis is still here. He's like taking I'm pictures, still hanging out for this episode. Ellis was nothing. working the camera for us. He said nothing. nothing. I you wanted want him to say, say something. So he said you nothing. Say something, Ellis. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was I was waiting for Here, Alex Hoffman to pop out. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Alex. <laughs> well, speaking of the ending and River Horse, say, man, you guys our very play. first episode, for those that don't know, <laughs> was River Horse the band, the only full band to be on the podcast so far? Because I got lazy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the outro that you've grown to love so much <clears throat> is definitely a River Horse original. Who gets the last laugh on Doomsday, actually? But we, we cut that part of the song, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the recording. We'll see, you, we'll see you on February 16th, yeah? February 16th, 8 o'clock. Folks, it's all ages. Everyone is welcome. Um, we will be having uh, a giant party afterwards, so please come and stick around for that. Listen, you can get the tickets online. They are available online. We will sell them to you so much cheaper. Um, <laughs> yes. We indeed. have uh, $20 tickets. They're at Chicago Street <laughs> Pub. Um, each of the musicians has a stack of them at all times. I may, I may, I may be, I may even, maybe maybe Brian and I can talk about this, but may, we we may even like, Come to your house and drop them off and play you a tune like sure. outside of your bushes in front, like 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 Christmas carol. Like, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not promising that, but you know, if you want them, get them. You know, because there, there's many ways to do it, and we'll make sure that that happens. If you want them, there's no reason not to have them. And as a matter of fact, if you guys want to come and join us on February 10th, it's a Saturday. We are. Doing like a little uh, acoustic jam. We're gonna we're gonna play some tunes. We're gonna play some cover songs. It's gonna be a real laid back kind of thing at Elder Brewing. Um, I'm gonna post links to all this stuff in the description of this episode. Uh, but Elder Brewing was kind enough to let us come and have a jam session there. It's a totally free show. Um, it's gonna be all acoustic, no amps, no microphones, uh, acoustic bass, guitar, saxophone. Donald brings something to play some drums on, um, and we're gonna be selling tickets there. So if you want to come by, I'm going to say it's a free show, it's great beer, and uh, we'll have some some treats for you. We may even do a we may even do a giveaway or two there. I don't. I, we'll we'll talk about. It. But I think if we you come down do to Elder giveaway. Brewing, you support that particular establishment, which is local down here, and all the things they're doing. Maybe maybe there'll be a, a special giveaway there that night if you show up. We'll see what happens. Yeah, a surprise. Ooh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't make it because I'm playing a show that night. Um, so are we. It's it's early. It's early. I'm sorry. It's from five to seven. I apologize. And that then afterwards, it's very early because the plan is then afterwards to come see the big, the big Lanyap, Lanyap at Chicago Street Pub. 
So, so, like so, so it all Ellis. works out. Which so, Ellis, so, right, so, and Dave are a part of. Yes, which is brilliant. So then yeah. Dave can stop pouting in the back rooms because we're going to come see you afterwards. Yeah. So. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, and that's a key show, too. Yours because I have to be setting we up. Didn't let you know. <laughs> so, so we'll come see yours. You know, you don't have to come see ours. I'll show you yours. Or <laughs> can, I see, can I see mine? Or no, wait, how's that go? I'll see mine if you see mine. Longest local show ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, both things are free that night. The uh, the Elder Brewing event and Big Line Yup at Chicago Street Pub are absolutely free. And we're playing at Port Noir for free as well with Allison Flood. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, River oh, Horse and Allie yeah. Flood. <laughs> yes. It's the Trifreakta. Trifreakto. Yes. So it's a night of free music. You have no excuses. Go out and see something. Go try to see all of them. They're free. You don't have to lose any money and feel like you got to stay at one place. Yeah, do Bounce a little, around, baby. Do a little uh, bar crawl and support the establishments as well. Brian, what time is that show? Eight. Eight. It's at eight. Eight to question eight. mark? <laughs> <laughs> question mark. No, I'm pretty positive. The man of many I know, words. I'm pretty positive. Brian Motel. Man of- eight. Eight. <laughs> hey, it sounds like we archery when you like don't do so well. Eight. Like, oh. <laughs> I Thanks thought- for having us, Tom. I, re- I really appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. We-, we really appreciate it. Um, Brian? Yes? Um, I would ask you to sing along with, with, with your outro. But you're not gonna? No, go ahead. Nope. <laughs> All right, do you want to sing? I did it for your video the other week. Well, now it's got to be a tradition, though, man. Well, then just click play, Dave. All right, ready? Let's hear ready? It, Dave. Brian, Let's you're, do- off, you're off the hook. We don't even have the outro <laughs> for this episode. Ready? Oh, I heard it on the radio. Very good. Oh. You're not going to harmonize with me in some weird voice? Everybody's leaving the room, Can you Tom. do? Everybody's Can you do leaving. falsetto and I'll do like low? I can't right now. All right, I'll do falsetto and you do low. Ready? Oh, I heard it on the radio. <laughs> oh, I heard it on the radio. <laughs> oh, I heard it on the radio. Cha. <laughs> Uh uh-huh.